Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. So this is the first of our series of Ireland games. We're going to cover the Mexico game today. Yeah. And throughout the week we'll, we'll be talking about the Uruguay game and the Austria game as well. Yeah, so uh, we'll, we're just going to have a little uh, match review here of the Mexico game. Yeah, um, obviously late Thursday night in New York at Melo yeah. Stadium. I would imagine a lot of people were up watching it. I wouldn't say so. There was 42,000 on the ground, which was good enough, but it looked quite looked kind of half empty, obviously, because MetLife holds nearly 100,000 people for some events. Yeah, but there's a lot um, of Mexicans living there as well. <laughs> a lot of Mexicans, a lot of Irish as well. Yeah. So it was a decent atmosphere for the game, but you know it doesn't help when you're playing a friendly with half a side. Um, a half one in the morning for Irish people. I don't think yeah. Air Sport probably did great numbers for it. But um, the game itself. Well, we'll start. We'll start with the kind of the, the line. Uh, yeah. Some um, surprising kind of selections in there, but at the same time, it is a friendly, so I kind of understand why. But he must be just kind of looking at uh, yeah. different ways to kind of shape up. But as far as the the eleven, I mean Randolph and Gall. I mean that wasn't too surprising. I was I was slightly surprised Aaron Randolph started, but then at the same time you look at it in retrospect, and he didn't play a lot the last six weeks or so of the season yeah. for West Ham after them couple of mistakes. Yeah, and so, he's getting abused a good bit by the West Ham fans yeah. as well. So. Well, I think every West Ham fan gets or every West Ham player gets a bit of abuse from West Ham fans. Unless and, you're Mark Noble, yeah, yeah, pretty much. But um, yeah, like not real. Too. He turned us down actually. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. As far as the the uh, the formation, I think is the first thing and the biggest thing about it is we switched to the kind of through well three at the back with McLean and Christie kind of playing as wing backs, but. The more surprising thing about it was that Conor Orham played as a deep midfielder with Callum O'Dowd and Daryl Horgan in front of him, which yeah, to me surprising. makes very little sense. It's kind of trying to play Chelsea's formation a little bit with having the two kind of yeah. inside wingers, but the only problem being he wanted Conor Horham to do the job of two people and had two big strikers up front, which I don't think is really needed, yeah, especially against Mexico. Kind of setup. Like we'll run through the players anyway before we're yeah. kind of the players in their position. So Kyo, Duffy, Shane Duffy and, Egan. and yeah, Egan at, at centre halves and then Christie and McLean. Yeah. For um wing backs. And then you have Horgan. Horgan. Sing. Yeah, and then Hor Hor Horgan up there with um O'Dowda. And then another two strikers in front of McGoldrick and uh, Murphy. Yeah. Which is kinda of bizarre, to be honest. It's especially against the Mexico side who are very good in midfield. Like, they didn't start a completely full-strength side, but, you know, Hector Herrera's in central midfield and plays for Porto, and he's a superb central midfielder yeah. in terms of passing range and everything like that. And Champions he was, League player, too. Yeah. Exactly. He was just opening up. He was opening us up in midfield at will because he just had so much space and time on the ball. We sat really deep as well at times, which when you play such an attacking formation and when you play with essentially four forwards in the team, with Odell, O'Horgan and two strikers, you're always going to struggle if you sit deep because they're not meant to sit there and chase and hassle and harry. Yeah. I think if they had of, I think the team actually would have worked a lot better if you'd have taken either McGoldrick or Murphy out, whichever one you want, yeah. and brought in. As you were saying, they are quite similar. So like, yeah, just have one who's who's a big brute and have one that's kind of fast playing off. Them. Yeah, exactly. But you don't even need one fast playing off. You could have Daryl Murphy playing up front with. Horgan and Odowda behind them yeah. in that kind of Chelsea mould where the two of them can run in behind and get a bit of space and time on the ball to run at teams and you bring in a Union O'Kane or Stephen Gleeson to play midfield with yeah. Hurahan because obviously Gleeson came on and got the goal and he played pretty well when he came on I think it showed in the first in the first goal how all over the place the team were like they just yeah. no one looked like they knew what they were doing between McLean Horgan Christy, like they all for the first goal, I think they were all fairly guilty now, and I don't think Randolph was a, a fault for the goal. It was a f fine strike, in fairness. Yeah, it was, and let's be Wait. fair. Let's be fair as well. Corona. They're in drinking a few of them. <laughs> That's why you're wearing all that gear. No, rascal clobber. <laughs> um, it's festival season. Yeah, but yeah, I feel like the back three. In the first half, I feel really, really struggled against the physicality of Jimenez and then the pace of Corona. I think they really yeah. struggled to deal with that kind of duo and that doesn't bode well for us going into the Austria game because Austria are going to probably play with a big striker up there and 
couple of more nippy players playing off them and stuff. And I think with a full strength squad, we, we, we'll we'll do all right. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about more of the Austria game kind of closer to the time. Um, yeah, we will. But I think um, impre- players who impressed, I think Cyrus Christie, especially going forward, was outstanding. Yeah, um, I think he always does a solid job for us. Yeah. I don't think he's going to let you down when mm. Shamey's out. I think Shamey obviously is a miss because he's Shamey's prob- God. Yeah, he's probably our best. He's probably our best player by some distance. So yeah. you're obviously going to miss him. You're going to miss his leadership, and I think Christie can be a little bit suspect going backwards, but going forwards, yeah. he is very he good. He's comfortable on the ball, and that's kind of all we need, kind of going forward. So yeah, well, he created the fullbacks in the championship last season. He created the third most chances behind the two Huddersfield fullbacks, who yeah. really, really do bomb on. So. You think with stuff like that, he might he might get picked up by someone in the summer, which you never know. Well, he's been linked with a couple of Premier League clubs yeah. as well, which I mean would would be a good move from a distance. He's he he is twenty four now, so yeah. he does kind of need to get a move on if he's going to make that step up to the next yeah. level because he does look promising. Like other players who are in the side, obviously on Thursday, who will play against Austria next week. You would think Christie will start right back because. He he doesn't really seem to trust Matt Doherty, even though Doherty's had a good season at Wolves. He doesn't seem to really want to give him a big chance. Maybe we'll see him against Uruguay, but I think Chris, he's just kind of mixing it up right now. Uh, yeah, I think putting some first team players in, mixed in with him because he doesn't want to throw a whole like on experience side out, like you know. Yeah, well, that's obviously why you <clears throat> McLean in the team. I know Shane Duffy doesn't have a lot of caps, but he would be a more experienced head within that particular squad. Richard Kiao has obviously got. Yeah. A few calves been around the squad for a while. Randolph the same. I thought he was an awful game. Like he normally does a solid job for us. Um, but I thought, in, in fairness, you look like he got run ragged there. Yeah. Maybe it might be the fact that it's the end of the season, and he's kind of he might have been out having a few points with the squad. Yeah. Because they are renowned for going for a few points, and there's absolutely <laughs> nothing wrong with that. As Paul up here later on today. Um, but I do, you know, Kyo for me has always looked a bit suspect at the top level when we played against. The best sides. I thought it was amazing the, against Germany. The, the Euros aside, and maybe that one Germany game, I think when we played other teams, other good teams, he's looked a little bit, not shaky, but that he can be got at and there is space in behind him and he's maybe not the quickest on the turn to kind of cover himself. I'm so, kind of surprised. I, I, do, I do think he's a, I think he's a good player. I tell you what, for his performance as far, I'll tell you what, he got picked up by, by like a West Brom or something. Yeah, he will lead a perfect West Brom yeah, to the half, amazing, isn't he? Like, you know. the big Valley could probably play a bit of right back for them. I mean, if you imagine Delaney's getting in for Palace, I don't see why uh, yeah. Kyo couldn't get in, you know? That's true. Well, like, Duffy alongside him, then obviously Shane is going to start the yeah. game against Austria, and him and Clark will probably start send oh. a half together. John Egan, I thought, has had a, fin- he has had a really good season at Brentford. It can't be understated yeah. how good he's been for Brentford this season. But stepping up to that next level and stepping up against you know, strikers who've played in the Champions League and won league. Him and I won a league title this year at Benfica. Yeah. He's let's talk a little bit more about him because he got the second goal. Now, as far as centre half, we're talking about there. I don't want James McLean was doing in that position. He was doing marking him. I think that's the problem when you play James McLean as a wing back. James is always liable to do something stupid. Um, he's just a, he's a little bit rash in his challenges. Yeah. He wears his heart on his sleeve, you know. Oh, James McLean is. A guaranteed, through through. yeah, he's a guaranteed starter for us because of the work rate he puts in and the desire he has to do stuff. Sure, but Darren, Darren Fletcher came out and said he's, he's, he's never seen someone run so much. Yeah, he just doesn't just, stop. For and all the players minutes. he would have played with, like, yeah, he played with some big. He's played, best. He's played with Ronaldo. He, he's played with Jason Park though, and to say that he runs more than Park is it's actually yeah, a big statement. Put more effort in than, yeah. than Ronaldo or something else as well yeah exactly and yeah, everyone knows how hard he works if they yeah. watch like documentaries and stuff on him well hopefully I think <laughs> hopefully now obviously he played left wing back um, yeah hopefully he just never he plays kind of, it yeah he kind of gets <laughs> pushed forward like I think if we were to yeah, play three at the forward, back obviously yeah just if now. we're playing three at the back with wing backs I think Robbie Brady suits yeah, playing that left wing back role perfect yeah, yeah definitely yeah I'd actually like him at Everton as like a, a replacement for Baines because he's catching on a bit. But I'd like if he's going to be starting for Burnley, I'd rather see him start for Burnley. You know. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, as far as the penalty, I mean, you know, he was a bit, a bit, a bit full of himself. I thought. Yeah. Uh, with his little run up and all, but fair play to him. He took it away. And, he's know. a he is a good striker though, and he's a confident bloke. He always has been kind of yeah. coming up through the ranks. He was at Atletico Madrid for a while and stuff. He's 
he's a good footballer and you've got to remember Mexico are going into the Confederations Cup in a couple of weeks so they're not exactly on their holidays yeah. they're getting ready for a tournament that they their manager has actually come out and said that they're really focused on winning that they would see it as a big thing for them to win the Confederations Cup yeah. obviously it's not the World Cup or even the you know, at the end of the day even the mean? CONCACAF Gold Cup or anything like that it's a lesser tournament that's there mm. really to test the infrastructure of Russia for next year, but it's still beating some really good teams if they were to do it. So yeah. they're focused and ready, and they didn't bring out a full strength side against us, but it was still a strong side, and we were very experimental. So I think Odell and Horgan really, really struggled though. Yeah, well, we'll talk about the third goal anyway because it just looked like a, a like a bundle of errors. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Again, Kyo, I don't know what he was doing. He just dived straight in and fella just kind of was like, oh, see you later. That's w- when you've got a player of, and we talked about it just before there, that um, you don't rate Carlos Vela, but at the same time, he's got great feet. Yeah, he's got great yeah. feet. And he's got he a used good, to always do this He's got a good Arsenal. left foot. He so. used to just always call chip goals for Arsenal. Yeah. Do you remember that? He, he loves a chip. He's he always loved used to always, he, yeah. when, when Arsenal... Were like un- invincibles, and they used to play in the Carling Cup or something. They used to have him as a like a backup playing. They used to play their kids in every cup competition. Yeah, and he'd always come in and he'd just be scoring dinks here, there, and everywhere yeah. for fun. Well, that's he's and played out. He's he played out. He's played out on the Roy for Sociedad for the majority of the time. He's been there so because he was playing kind of second fiddle to Griezmann for a while, and he's still playing second fiddle now. And I think that's kind of. I think he was linked to a move uh, to the states or something like that. He's going to the new club in LA oh. for the next MLS season. That's where he's actually signed for them already. That uh, when that next MLS season starts, he'll have left Sociedad to go. Well, enough about uh, Vela and the Mexicans. We'll talk about we'll talk about our goal. Yeah. Um, and um, Gleason. Yeah, I mean, it fell from nicely in the box. He, I thought he took it well. It was a, it was a, just a kind of fairly average goal, but yeah. sure for him, I'm sure he's delighted. Yeah, sure, it's a big moment for him. He doesn't score that many goals at club level for Birmingham either, so mm. it's a rarity for him overall, especially you know coming into an Ireland side 15 minutes to get on the game as well. He only just come Treated on, and, as well. Yeah. Um, he's trying to make a bit of an impression, and hopefully that's done it for him because I think he's actually quite a good player, and I think he's a little bit different to a lot of what we now have in midfield. We've a lot of really good passers of the ball and Connor Horahan and Harry Arthur and James McCarthy and stuff like that and I think Gleason's actually a little bit more dogged yeah. and can give us just that little bit different when we need it and he's been around the squad for a while and he's never really got a chance he's always kind of been that player who um has been in the squad and then not played in the friendlies or got on in the 90th minute in a friendly and he's the Ross Barkley of Ireland yeah pretty much <laughs> pretty, pretty much. the best way to put it yeah except he doesn't mouth off on Instagram after he doesn't play I don't think he mouthed off I just think he put up a picture yeah well, that's, he anyway. was low key mouthing off yeah, it's probably going to leave everything <laughs> anyway but yeah, let's not talk about that um, as far like in an ideal world I would love to see Arthur and McCarthy in a in, in midfield together I'd love to see Arthur McCarthy and Horahan actually as a three. Yeah. Well, obviously you've got Jeff Hendrick as well. Though, yeah, which oh, is, yeah, yeah. Which, which we kind of forget about sometimes. Kind of forget Jeff Hendrick's too. there. Um, but we actually have options in midfield now, which we didn't for... None of them are yeah, world-class that's, that's players. Not my, that's but, not my big issue. My big issue is that we've known to put the ball in the net. No. That's, that's my biggest issue, and that's worrying, like, coming into any tournaments or anything like that. Like, and I don't understand Irish fans used to put down Robbie Keane. Like, yeah. the fella... He done it. He always turned up. He might not have been the greatest of footballers, but with but the he, ball at his he, feet, but he put the ball in the back and never a living. So. But if you look at any like one to elevens or anything like that, and if ever he's been on the team, he's got in the team yeah. with great players. Well, so Dimitar Berbatov said he's the best striker he's played with, mm-hmm. and Dimitar well, Berbatov played, played really. United with Rooney in his prime. Like, and that's we have since Robbie Keane left and since Robbie Keane started to decline. I think Steve Sh- Jarrett will put him up there too. Yeah, and then we go on. And Shane Long has started the majority of the games and Long is a cracking player for running the lines yeah. and holding his the ball up and like, hassling he wouldn't, and, he'd be our hardest working forward definitely yeah. like, the problem with Long is and I think I've always said the problem with Shane Long since he was at Reading even and scored all those goals in the championship season for Reading is if you give Shane Long time to think about his finish he's going to miss yeah he's very instinctive if, yeah if you just put the ball to him and he has no time like the, um, the Germany game probably aside the goal against Germany, he Poland did have a little bit of time. time Poland didn't have any time. It was yeah. a good finish. And 
a lot of his goal trial, if you watch him, are quite instinctive first touch finishes yeah. where he just kind of buries it without thinking and that's when he's at his best but he's never going to be able to do that consistently at the top level he's shown that in the Premier League he's I think he's done well on the Cumin at Southampton I feel like this season he's kind of well, he did, but, he, as, a bit. but he's still only scored what 10 goals that season he's yeah. not a, he's not a goal scorer Shane Long's a very good footballer but, but he's, he's not been out like goals for Pella for, for that yeah game. But anyway, we're kind of going a bit off topic here. It's supposed to be the Mexico game. Yeah, we're still talking about Shane Long. Well, the one thing I'd want to point out, and um, as we're recording this this morning, Sean McGuire has just signed for Preston. But the night before, he's just scored a hat trick for um, Cork in a top of the table clash. Which against. they will be talking about in the League of Ireland show. Plug. Lovely plug. Um, but he scored that great hat trick against Dundalk for Cork. And yeah. now he's getting his move to Preston. Surely after Martin O'Neill and. Roy Keane being at the game last yeah. night as well and him scoring the hat trick, he has to come into the squad. I'm not saying he's the next Robbie Keane by any means. He scores goals. He scores goals, but more so than that, he's different. He's different. You look at the two players that played up front on Thursday against Mexico, McGoldrick and Murphy. They're both big lads. McGoldrick's got a bit of pace about him, but neither of them are going to score you a lot of goals. Mm. Neither of them are going to, you know really worry teams with their pace I know McGoldrick's a big lad so he doesn't have to be as quick because so, the pace he has will carry him but I think Maguire coming into the squad even if he's not starting games for Ireland and he's coming off the bench for long or playing with long or whatever even playing out wide at times I know he can play out wide he played out wide for Accrington when he was over there he gives us something different and he's scoring goals and he's in a rich brain of form and if you look at Irish strikers How across Sean Maguire's 23 I think he was 24 he went over to West Ham very young and had spent a lot of time out on loan at different clubs in the lower leagues in England. Yeah, I mean, some of them were say that he didn't. can't do a job in England. I mean, Kevin Doyle was scoring goals consistently at a high level, Shane Long. Yep. I mean, and, uh, and there's a lot, of, a lot of players that are in that squad now that came from the League of Wales. That's not to say oh. that, that uh, they can't make it. You know what I mean? Stephen Ward's gone down got relegated came back up and ve- really really improved you look at the, James the, Coleman the biggest I think the biggest one of a player who went over young and came back to Ireland played in the League of Ireland and then got his maybe his bigger move it was to a smaller club but his bigger move because he was actually going to play was Keith Fahey yeah. back in the day where he'd been over at Arsenal well. and over at Aston Villa when he was younger and the head he'd be the first to say the head wasn't there um, he was a bit all over the place and being at a big club and everything got to him a little bit and he kind of came back he was playing non-league football in Ireland and he was picked up by Pats and he just never looked back from that point on with Pats yeah. he was wonderful and he was and then he, for Ireland too yeah and then he got in, into, got to Birmingham played well for Birmingham got into the Ireland squad and forged out an international career for himself yeah. and a Premier League career he scored some uh, crucial goals as well yeah he was one to the right foot so yeah, but quite. like Maguire could be do, to essentially do the same thing it didn't work out for him in England the yeah. first time I know from, time will tell I suppose I know from watching him in League 2 with Accrington obviously being a Ports of fan there's no Pompey jersey up here today but there sometimes is um, watching him in the I'm same league I'm going to buy a Hampton jersey with Shane Long and stick it up there now. I'll burn it um, <laughs> but I do think he struggled the first time around and he said himself when he came home he was a little bit homesick that he maybe went over a little bit too young he probably yeah. should have left it another year or so in Ireland and then went but He's got a second chance now. He's going to be a lot more mature. He's a lot more confident in himself. I'd say yeah. he's ripped up this league for the last year. And I think it's 100% time that he comes into the Ireland squad. Because I think every time you look at the Ireland squad, you go, all right, well, there's a, you know, John Egan coming into the squad. Okay, that's a new young defender, Kevin Long, coming into the squad this time around as well. You know, some of the younger midfielders have come into the squad, and I've doubted it, and Horror and stuff like that. He's, he's going to be the next. Yeah, and next Damien Duff. He's going to be the next, he's he's gonna gonna be the next be Richard Dunn. And, yeah. and they're not. But I think the one you look at every single time the squad gets announced, you look at our strikers and you just go, oh my God. Like, yeah, who's going to put the ball in? Yeah, like I really hope James McLean has a good game and scores a goal, like, yeah. because otherwise we're not oh, getting... Oh, you're Wes Hulham. Yeah, let's not, talk, let's not talk about Wes Hulham. I've got right. far too many pelters for that. We've gone on a bit now, so we're, we'll leave it at that. And um, if you guys feel like we've left out anything, please do leave the comments below and let us know. Your feedback is very vital to us going forward. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Come on, you boys in green.